Well, since you mentioned soccer, uh, you, your brother, and David Beckham own this small soccer team that started up in the city. Um, what have you learned about leadership through the experience of owning that professional sports team? I guess if you can't play in one, you might as well own one. Yeah, you know, I'll be honest, it's, uh, it's, uh, it, it's been an unbelievable experience. I think there's few people, if you, think, if you look at all professional sports, whatever the league is, and you look at owners of those sports teams, there's very few owners that actually own a team in the city they live in. Mm. So today most teams are owned by people that live in other cities. And even rarer is, a, is individuals that can start a team in their hometown from scratch. Right? So we were able to bring a team to Miami we're born and bred here, went to school here, high school, college, never left. We're, we're, we're lifers here, and we were able to bring the biggest sport in the world to our city and mm. start it. So, you know, it, it's been a, that's been unbelievable. Mm. It's just the opportunity to do that, the opportunity to know that that's a legacy that will leave forever. Uh, we're very, very proud of that. With that said, right, you know, we launched during COVID. Like, like our first game was supposed to be the Saturday that the, everything shut down for COVID. So. The first two years of our franchise have been very difficult dealing with the COVID issues because they, you know, they're very different. And we also thought, right, well, you know, we're going to be able to come in here, we'll sign a few players, and we're going to win a championship. Like year one, we're going to win a championship. <laughs> we really believe that. <laughs> and what we realized was it's unbelievably difficult, right? You have 30 other owners in this league that have all been successful, that all want to win that all want to invest, and it's, it's one of the hardest businesses you could ever anticipate being. Why? Because every Monday, every single fan, no matter how much they know or don't about the sport, think they're an expert. And every choice you make and every decision you make is second-guessed, unlike any other decision you make in your life. And, that, that, mm. and at the same time, you're so upset that you're losing, right, when you lose a game. Like, I, I can't stand it, right? I hate losing. So it's, it's unbelievable, the, the, the emotions that you go through. But at the end of the day, I think what we're learning is it's just like running a real business. If you set a great foundation and you put the processes in place to be successful and you don't deviate from it and you have a plan and you work the plan, I think you'll ultimately be successful, right? So we're pretty excited. We have our first game on February 26th this year. Our, our new season starts. We've been looking forward to this for months because we didn't have a great season last year. <laughs> but, you know, it's a new beginning for us. We've got a, 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 a relatively brand new roster. And, uh, we, you know, I, I, grew up, I grew up here as a kid watching the Dolphins because it was the only sports team in town. And then you got to the Heat and you had the Marlins. And the reality is that other than my kids playing soccer, I wasn't really exposed to soccer in a big way mm. growing up. And, What's been most surprising to me is the love there is for the game here in this community. I think this is the one community across the country where so many people have moved here from South and Latin America where their number one sport was soccer. You know, it may not be our team that they're, our team may not be their number one team, but they have a number one team from wherever they came from. And our ability to ultimately really try to use Inter Miami to be, you know, a way of bringing all of those communities together, a way of bringing all of those soccer fans together to root for their home team today uh, gives us an enormous amount of, of pride and satisfaction. But the excitement for soccer, the interest in soccer in this community has blown us away. I mean, mm -hmm. Well, let, let, let's just try and blow you away for a moment. How many people here have been to an Inter Miami game? All right. We need a little bit more than that. I wanted to ask you, uh, having been you, to several you, games you myself, I'm, I'm one of your biggest fans. <laughs> I want to know how do you find all of those guys who are in the cheering section behind the home goal? Where, where do you find all of those people? Yeah, it's incredible, right? So it's, it's uh, for those of you that haven't been to a soccer game, we have a supporter section. It's unlike any other sport, sporting event you've been to. And this supporter section holds about just over 3,000 people. And they have drums, and they have uh, <laughs> you know, musical instruments, and there's probably a lot of alcohol involved, but they are really, really, really loud the entire game. And they're chanting. Yeah. They have their chants, and they sing from the beginning of the game to the end of the game. And part of the spectacle of going to see the game is actually going to see the supporters. Right. Because it's, it's truly a very unique and different sporting experience than anything you may have ever seen. Yeah. And, they're uh, often a lot more consistent than the players. They're, more, they're much more consistent <laughs> than the players. Okay. All right. right. Well, why don't we open it up for a few uh, questions? Yes, uh, please. Go ahead. Yeah, Frank, uh, thanks for joining us. Thank you. 
Okay. Okay. You got have you got a serious one as well, uh, Frank? That was pretty serious. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> <laughs>